In this problem, we have three functions, x, x squared, and 6x minus 4x squared. And we're being asked if they're linearly dependent or independent on these set of real numbers. And it says use the definition. So first of all, note that these are actually dependent because this function here, f sub 3 of x, depends on the other ones, right? You can write this as 6 times f1 of x minus 4 times f sub 2 of x. So f sub 3 of x depends on the other two functions, so it's dependent. However, in this problem, we're being asked to use the definition of linear dependence to actually carefully determine uh, whether it's dependent or independent. So let's go through it very carefully. And this is a good exercise because it increases your knowledge of the definition. And if you ever have to take a proof-based course on linear algebra, uh, you'll be a little bit stronger. So you always want to start by assuming that you have a linear combination of these functions. So we'll start by saying suppose, I'll abbreviate suppose here, suppose that we have c1 times x plus c2 times x squared plus c3 times and then 6x minus 4x squared. So this is called a linear combination of our functions and suppose it's equal to zero and this is for some c1, c2, c3. We don't know what these are. These are just numbers. And for all x, for all x in the set of real numbers. So you always start these problems by assuming you have a linear combination. And then don't forget to say, for, you know, for some c1, c2, c3, and for all x, right, it's for all x. The next thing you can do is basically distribute the c's. So we have c1 times x, nothing there. Uh, c2 times x squared, so nothing happens there. We can distribute the c3, so it'll be 6c3x minus, and then 4c3, I don't know what's up with my threes today, <laughs> 3x squared. I can't write a so small three, apparently. <laughs> All right, then you want to group stuff together. So like group your x's, group your x squareds. So I guess we can group this and this. We can do this. We can write it as c1 plus 6c3x. That's a better 3. Success. And then we can take this one and this one and write it as c2 minus 4c3x squared. And this is equal to 0. So recap, we start off by assuming we have a linear combination of the functions equal to zero. For some c1, c2, c3, and for all x in this interval, we rewrite it by distributing the c's, then we group together all the like terms. And let me just recap this, I actually didn't even mention it. Um, so if, if we get that all of the c's are zero and we have no say in it, the answer is independent. But if we get that they're not all zero, the answer is dependent. So if they're all zero and we have no choice, it's independent. If they're not all zero, it's dependent. So once we get to this step here, well, we have an equation equal to zero. This is really equal to zero x plus zero x squared. There's really a zero there. So basically, you're just using matching. So you set each piece equal to zero. So we have c1 plus 63 equal to zero and then c2 minus 4c3 equal to 0. And what you can do uh, is just maybe solve this one for c1. So this is negative 6c3. And then solving this one for c2, you get uh, 4c3. And it looks like they're not all 0. It looks like you can just make up numbers. So what's the easiest number in the world we can plug in besides 0? Well, that would be uh, c3. So if you just make up a number, so take c3 equals 1. So if we do that, c1 is going to be negative 6, right? Because if you put a 1 there, that'll be negative 6. And then if you put a 1 here, where the c3 is, c2 will be 4. So we found constants, not all 0, such that this equation is true. So that means that the answer is dependent, which we knew from the beginning. But uh, the purpose of this problem 
is to you know do it using the definition. So start by assuming you have a linear combination for some C1, C2, C3, and for all x. Distribute the C's, so that's the step here. Then group the x's, that's what we did here. Group the x's and x squareds. When you get to this step, you just set each piece equal to zero. And then if they're not all zero, like this, this has to be forced. So that didn't happen this time. We got two equations. We were able to manipulate them in some way. We solved the first one for C1, solved the second one for C2, and then we were, we were able to pick a number for C3 and get non-zero answers. So that means it's dependent. It'll be independent when they're all zero and like you have no choice. So like for example, say you had gotten C1 equals zero, C1 plus C2 equals zero, C3 equals zero. So if this happens, that's zero. You put that in there, then C2 is zero. And then C3 is zero. So if you, if you get something like this, then you have no choice and then it's independent. So in the examples that follow, you'll see many more examples of dependence and also uh, independence. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.